on the Soul Medicine channel here on YouTube, I'm sure you've seen a lot of our videos where we talk about a variety of different stem cells and also have stories and news clippings of patients treated at cell medicine. So some of you have asked me, said, Tom, it's interesting about cell medicine, but what do you do? What is your role? Well, my role is that I'm CEO of the company called Medistem. And Medistem is the company that has developed the intellectual property and the patent applications that are being used and licensed to sell medicine. So, to tell you a little bit about Medistem, Medistem is a San Diego biotechnology company, has an office in Arizona as well, and we do a lot of different adult stem cell therapeutic development. Our main product is a new type of stem cell. It's called the endometrial regenerative cell. As the name implies, the endometrial regenerative cell, ERC for short, comes from the endometrium. The endometrium is the lining of the uterus. Why did we look in the lining of the uterus for stem cells? Well, because the uterus, every month, has a cyclical buildup of new tissue. Um, so we believe that stem cells may be implicated in this controlled generation of new tissue and the blood vessels that support the new tissue, which when you become pregnant, becomes placenta. So we initially identified a population of cells, which we published, that appear to be similar to mesenchymal stem cells, except they have some unique biological markers on them that we're not going to talk about in this video, but we'll talk about it in future videos and you can read the publication. The very interesting thing of this stem cell, the ERC, that we identified in the endometrium is that it can be made into many different kinds of tissue. So, as you can see in this figure, ERCs can be made into fat cells, as detected by a red staining, bone cells, as detected by calcium, muscle cells, as detected by alpha-actin or muscle myosin. They can also become blood vessel cells, as detected by CD34 or CD62, liver cells, as detected by shape and albumin expression, islet or pancreatic cells, as detected by production of insulin, brain cells, as detected by nestin, which is found on neurons, or glial brain cells, which is um, detected by GFAP, and also lung cells as detected by lung pore fact, pores of fact in protein C. So, we have a population that can become a variety of different tissues. The first question with any kind of stem cell is, is it safe? I mean, if it's not safe, in animal studies there's no point in further developing it. So, we initially published a paper where we gave mice escalating doses of ERCs, and there was no toxicity. In the same paper, we demonstrated that if you induce spontaneous tumors, slow-growing tumors, by giving them mice radiation, you also do not accelerate, you actually inhibit tumor formation by administering these stem cells. As you can see in the figure, when you administer ERCs into a rat model of glioma, in the top panel, you see the glioma growing in the control mice. In the middle panel, you see an inhibition of glioma. This is uh, rats that have received ERCs intravenously. And in C is rats that have received ERCs intrathecally, uh, intertumorally, I mean, into the, into the tumor. So it appeared from the animal data that the ERCs do not have direct toxic effects and do not promote tumors. Now, because the ERC can become different tissue, and because we've also published that the ERC can modulate the immune system, there was a study done in four patients with multiple sclerosis who received ERCs intrathecally, which means into the cerebral spinal fluid, and also received ERCs intravenously. And the follow-up was three months and one year, and as you can see, there was no, um, no abnormalities in the basic organ and serum function and, and plasma levels tested of the enzymes produced by the organs, and there was no ectopic formation of tissue, no abnormal tissues were made, and uh, obviously no tumors were made. So, 
Besides this initial safety investigation, the ERCs were also used in a patient with Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. And Duchenne's muscular dystrophy is a disease where there's a mutation in the gene dystrophin. It's a lethal disease, which um, the majority of patients do not live past the age of 30. And the patient that was treated with ERCs was, was, uh, was in a wheelchair at age 12. And he was treated when he was 23 years old. He underwent a profound recovery, um, increase in muscle activity from a 2.5 2.5 out of 5 to a 4 out of 5 and um, if you look at this video where I'm showing you the link that's actually a video of a news report on the same patient that the publication came out of. The um, other interesting thing of course about this patient is that he started expressing dystrophin at the sites of injection so the ERCs were actually becoming muscle cells that expressed the correct gene. The other interesting um, clinical use of ERCs to date has been recently published uh, last week in the patient with congestive heart failure, a 74-year-old patient who received ERCs intravenously and had an improvement in ejection fraction from 25 to 30, between 25 to 30 was the pretreatment, to a 40% ejection fraction that was stable for the period of over one year. So, we know from an animal point of view and from limited human experiences, which were performed under compassionate use, that ERCs appear to be safe and appear to induce some biological effects. Now, from a company point of view, what do we do with the ERCs? So, we needed a disease condition in which we could rapidly begin human trials in the U.S. because the disease has a very bad prognosis. So we chose critical limb ischemia. This is a condition where a lot of type 2 diabetics have it. It's reduced circulation in the lower limbs causing amputation. And uh, we developed a clinical protocol with Dr. Michael Murphy who has treated patients in the US with critical limb ischemia before. Uh, that's a link up there to a video about Dr. Murphy. But, um, and we developed animal studies, which we've published, showing that if you inject ERCs into mice whose circulation to the leg is blocked, the control mice have the leg dying, whereas the treated mice have the leg functioning. So based on that preclinical data, based on in vitro studies showing ERCs produce a lot of growth factors, we have applied to the, and based on the safety data, from animals and humans, we have applied to the FDA for an investigational new drug uh, submission and currently the FDA has requested some additional data on how the ERCs traffic, which we're in the process of uh, completing. We just received, our collaborators just received an SBIR grant for performing these studies. So basically what Medistem does, the lead focus is getting an FDA approved trial for critical limb ischemia using our cell product, the ERC. The advantage of the ERC, of course, is that these are cells which, number one, are a universal donor. That means they don't need matching. Number two, they can be injected easily at the doctor's office, so it's not a complicated stem cell procedure. And number three, and perhaps most importantly, these cells are very cheap and easy to produce in large quantities for which uh, Medistem has filed intellectual property. Thank you very much.